Now you guys might be thinking to yourselves, Jonathan, what the heck, what gives? Why do you have a camper shell? Where's the slumber queen? Why are you in Oregon? And I'll answer these questions and concerns a little bit later, I promise. Man, Oregon is so, so beautiful. If you like forests and trees, the Pacific Northwest is definitely the place to be. It is, it's just gorgeous. Autumn is starting to peek its way into the scene a little bit too here and there. There's a little bit of color going on. You could, you could tell the seasons are changing in the air. Wow. A lot of cows. Ooh. What a bummer. I showed up to the spot that I was supposed to camp at. This, oh, what? There's a bald eagle right there. What? Oh, that's so cool. I've seen them once before in Oregon. It literally just flew right by. That was freaking cool. Wow. What was I saying? Oh yeah, so I pulled up to the spot that I was supposed to camp at. It was on the beach, like on the sand, right next to the water. And I found out that you have to have a special OHV permit and one of the red flags to stick up off of your vehicle, which I had no idea going into this. In fact, the resource that mentioned this spot specifically said that you don't need this if you're in a truck and you're just trying to camp in, in the sand, but I guess they were misinformed. That's a total bummer, I don't know. I don't know exactly where I'm gonna go now. I'm near the coast, so maybe I could find another cool spot to just post up for the night and sleep in the back of my truck. So not only was I not able to camp there, but I also paid the $5 fee to go onto the beach before I saw the signs that said you have to have a permit and the red flag. So I donated five bucks to the Oregon State Beaches. Oregon, it's worth it because your beaches are beautiful and uh, I love your beaches and your recreation areas. So take my $5 and cherish it and use it wisely. <laughs>
So I pulled over at this pool off on the side of the road. It's right next to the ocean, as you saw, and it's absolutely stunning, the views from this spot. This is actually the spot that shows up on my eye overlander as a spot to spend the night. I don't know exactly if I'm gonna spend the night here or not. It seems cool. There's not really any signs anywhere. It's pretty heavily trafficked right now, but I'm sure once the sun goes down, that'll die down. Uh, I think for now, I'm gonna go hang out on the beach, explore around a little bit, and pretty soon here, I'm gonna come back and get to cooking because I'm pretty starving. So let's just go down to the beach and go from there. You guys, you guys are wondering what the heck's going on, and it's time I just tell you what the big news that I made a big fuss about is. You're all familiar with my girlfriend Tessa at this point, and recently Tessa actually just got her first career-oriented job, and I'm really happy and proud and excited for her. She she went to college, you know, did the whole college thing, graduated, like so many other recent grads, she was kind of struggling to find a career-oriented job, and only recently until she expanded her spectrum to include other areas outside of LA, was she able to find a job. It's in Portland, Oregon. I don't know if you guys are familiar with, with me living in Portland, but I used to live here briefly last year during the pandemic. Tessa was supposed to come up here and join me, and we were all supposed to live together. Obviously the pandemic hit and a bunch of other weird, unfortunate events. And so that plan kind of just never really went through. But here we are like a year later, Tessa got a job up here. She got her first ever apartment as well. Um, it's all it's all her apartment. I actually am not living with her at the moment. I'm staying with her for now, but this is her apartment. It's her own studio. The plan for me is to go back down to Southern California and finish the camper. I was actually supposed to have it done in time to come up here to help her move. We are gonna load all of her stuff into the camper or some of her stuff into the camper. And then from here, after she got settled, I was gonna continue my travels in the camper up north into Canada and then Alaska. And alas, some more unforeseen technical difficulties came up with the truck. Now it's just a matter of getting back down there and finishing up. It's really exciting for Tessa. It's really just the next step in her life. So I'm, like I said, I'm really happy for her and I'm really proud of her. I've been up here in Oregon for the last few days, maybe like half a week, almost a week actually. I'll be here for another week or so. And the reason I got the camper shell is because I saw, I found a really, really good deal. And you know me, if I see a good deal, I can't turn it up on, especially on something like this. And so I got it. I was like, what the heck? I'm gonna do some camping while I'm up here. I might as well, you know, do a, sh a small road trip on my way back. The camper has just been all consuming of my life for the past couple months now at this point. And so the idea of just taking a little break and doing a little traveling in between, uh, it just sounded really, really alluring. And so that's why I got the camper shell. That's why I'm here in Oregon. Tessa, congratulations again. Uh, super proud of you. And now, now I'm gonna just enjoy this beautiful sunset. Like, look at this. This is unreal. <sighs> Eww. Man, it's beautiful out here.
Okay, I do actually want to cook while I still have plenty of light because the meal that I'm gonna be making is gonna require a little bit of time. And I just don't really like cooking in the dark anymore, especially if I'm trying to be low key. So I'm gonna head back to the truck right now and get started cooking dinner. So what I'm making today is a blackened fish burrito. I got some fish earlier today at a local seafood market and I'm gonna be using some Spanish rice, some chopped up olives, some bell pepper, onion, the whole nine yards. It's gonna be really good, but this is gonna take a while to cook. So let me just go ahead and get that started. Got a can of diced tomatoes going in with that. and one and a half cups of water. So this is the fish that we're gonna be using. Like I said, I got it at a local seafood market in Portland. It's a wild caught ling cod, caught here in Oregon. And I don't know if I've ever had ling cod, but I've heard it's pretty tasty and it wasn't too expensive, so that's what we're gonna be using. All right, it's starting to boil. Now we just gotta simmer it for 25 minutes. Why exactly did I choose to get a rice that's gonna take 25 minutes to cook on my camping stove? I don't know, I couldn't say, but hopefully it tastes good. all the veggies right in with the rice. This is actually a pretty common way of making Spanish rice anyways. Like the legit kind, not this pre-made package stuff that already has vegetables. But I'm honestly just kind of lazy to saute everything. So I might as well just cook it right into the rice. Just give that a nice stir. And there goes the sun. And that's it. Look at that cute little dog over there. So cute. Ecliptic Brewing Juicy IPA. Cheers. <sighs> if you guys don't like olives, well, I don't know what, you te what to tell you. You're missing out because olives are delicious. Baby's a flip. Oh my gosh, it's sticking a little bit, but that's okay. Hopefully, it's... Oh, okay. camera's in the way. Oh, perfect. Those olives. There's actually a lot of olives. <laughs> that pan fried, blackened ling cod, seasoned with garlic powder, salt, pepper. Oh, that looks beautiful. My gosh. Oh, ho, ho, beautiful. That's what we want, guys. Look at that. Oh, beautiful burrito. Also, check out these colors over here. Sheesh. Oh my. <laughs> 
There's so many different settings on these lights. This is this is absolutely surreal. This feels like a dream. Like this is how is this how is this possible right now? <laughs> this is insane, guys. Oh my gosh. It's just great. Like <laughs> what? Oh, doesn't get much better than this. Let's give this burrito a shot, eh? <laughs> oh my. Unreal. Well worth the effort. Definitely worth it. As you can see, I don't have any like window covers or tent or any curtains or anything like that. And I thought that today I would be sleeping on the beach in an area where I didn't really need to be, you know, covering myself up. But here we are, totally exposed windows. Oh well. All right, well, I think it's bedtime for me, so I will see you guys in the morning. Good night. Wow, so that ended up being an amazing spot. It was a really great night, super peaceful, super relaxing. There ended up being like a bunch of other, you know, nomadic dwellers. There's some vans, an RV, uh, a couple car campers. Like, I guess this is a pretty well-known spot, but it was great. This is literally like five-star views. Can't get much better than this. All right, guys, that's actually gonna do it for me. Uh, thanks, like always, for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Maybe even consider subscribing, but you definitely don't have to. You guys go on some adventures. <laughs> Get you guys go out there and go on some adventures of your own. Live life. Beat the status quo. Y'all know the drill. Sorry, it's, it's really early in the morning, so I'm fumbling my words. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you very soon in the next video.